All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. It was an absolutely wild start to the market, and I don't even know where to start. There was bad news from Apple. There was fake Bitcoin ETF news. There was Fed Harker and even Fed Goolsby saying stuff. You had the United States agreeing to ease sanctions on Venezuela, a little bit more politics, and a couple of things out of Israel there was a lot of action, but if you take note of what happened today, we closed up 1.2% on the NASDAQ. The bonds TLT was down by 1.65. The dollar came down a little bit today, but even in Europe, there wasn't much action. But what you are seeing here, everything was scattered and it's because of earnings. So, Chad, I hope you're ready for it. We did have a couple of earnings in the morning. We talked about this yesterday. It's even more important now for tomorrow, but not too crazy. But really, by Wednesday, the market is going to be in full-blown earnings season, and this isn't even the biggest earnings season. And what I mean by that is that these are kind of the smaller companies this week. So pay attention to how the market's moving because this weird effect in La La Land, well, it tends to happen during earnings. So Chad, I hope you're ready. We got a couple of things to talk about. I'm going to go over the calendar a little bit about what happened today and then the plays that we made and what we have for tomorrow. So Chad, what I need from you, a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open youtube.com slash the stock market. We will see you there in the morning, baby. Run it. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, down. Yeah. But right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen, there was a lot of reasons to go up and down today. And the main point I was saying here in the beginning is how wacky it was because the bonds and everywhere else around the globe, we were definitely in our own world. And there was a bunch of headlines. You know, Patrick Harker, I think it was around the time we went up here, there was even a little bit of a news scare throughout the day. I don't know if this is the exact reason why we dropped, but it was around here and it had to do with Blinken getting like into a bomb shelter with Netanyahu. And then they said, okay, that was only for a little bit and then everything was good. Nothing developed out of that. But the whole point is we had a lot of reasons to move today, but we were firmly holding for earnings. So I would say the China news out of Apple was very important. It was like Centerpoint Research and another analyst. They came out. It was reported by Bloomberg that the Apple sales in China are declining, but they were pretty optimistic of the United States because the first like back-to-back -back weekends have been good for the iPhone 15. So there was all this stuff. And like I said, even the Coinbase stuff, but for the most part, you saw what we've been waiting for and the market went up and the bonds absolutely got demolished remember the last couple of days we've been at the mercy of the bonds so to see this in earnings it kind of makes sense but now we are going to be waiting do earnings end up good or bad that could determine a lot you did have Schwab this morning they weren't good but the fact that it wasn't that bad and that they were talking about stemming outflows the stock went up 5%. Even Pfizer, if you guys don't remember what happened on Friday, we were there after hours for a little bit. They guided down, and at one point, the stock was down 10%. And even today, they shot up here. So there was a lot of could have been worse reaction today, but a lot of hyper focus on the earnings. And now that's what we're going to be getting next. So as far as this week and what's important, here are the whole earnings list. You could take a screenshot or you could go to earnings whispers to get this whole thing. You could just pull it off of their Twitter. But in the morning tomorrow now, Bank of America, Lockheed Martin, Goldman Sachs, Johnson & Johnson, this will be enough to start getting ideas about the earnings season. But then again, you have all of the other big names that are going to follow. So don't don't get ahead of yourself and expect the market breadth to widen, meaning the correlation has been dying down as the volatility calms down. We're focusing on events. All these different names do not be surprised to watch the market and a lot of things kind of go in one direction and then certain pockets of the market to hold up. So tomorrow, that's what we'll be looking for off of the morning, even throughout the day. And now we are really going to get a kickoff into earnings season and find out how everybody is feeling. So 
Earnings is going to be the main focus as far as the calendar, though. Tomorrow does get a little bit more exciting. We are going to be getting that event with China and Russia. So watch for the headlines. And what I was trying to say yesterday, you're probably going to get a lot of headlines, but nothing that's going to move the market or change the world too much. But, you know, I'm sure you're going to hear jabs and alliances and this and that. But quite frankly, there's like a hot war in the Middle East that is probably going to garner more attention and you've even seen how markets have been involved and not involved with that at the same time so keep that in mind but that is going to be an event tomorrow you will I think get the G30 and all those bankers meeting but then even for economic data we went over all of this stuff yesterday the real stuff will be retail sales watch the bonds in the morning but for the most part I think if all of the Fed speakers sound good and the earnings don't disrupt Let's watch if we progress in our earnings season and set the tone good or what clues we get out of it. Do we continue to see bad earnings and not as bad stock reactions? That'll say a lot. And then at one point, do you watch earnings start to affect the bond? So I think it's going to be pretty simple. We're going to ride through. And then by Wednesday and Thursday, that's when you're Thursday, you're going to be getting Powell. I think that's when we'll take off a little bit more. So other than that, should be straightforward. I hope you're locked in. And now... Let us get into the play. So, right off the bat, I have a couple of different plays. Uh, one of them I made a move on. Two of them I did not, but the first one is Coinbase, and I went for the news in the morning. I got in at like 77 bucks, so with 100 shares, I'm down like two bucks a share, but essentially, that news came in. There was like a second update on it, had a little bit of reaction, but then it was quickly confirmed false, and then everything started to drop, so futures were up before that. I think uh, Bitcoin futures were up four. The news brought it up to six, but in general, I thought it would have been good if that news was legit. Ended up not being true, but the way it was holding up, I said I'd ride it through but definitely going to be watching these crypto plays i'm not married to this play going to try to get out of that one sooner than not but that is play number one then play number two this one really caught my attention all state uh they had news that nelson pelts is trying to get in on it and take a look at their chart versus uh even like uh who was it progressive i think pgr they've been killing it but all state looks to have a little bit of value you now got an activist stake uh, or active investor taking a stake in the company think it could be good i don't have a play on this but i I definitely want to see how it plays throughout earnings season and with everything else going on. I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes out for that. So that is play number two. And honestly, in the same breath, though, this was another one. We've talked about it a while, but overstock, we caught this at like 5% today. I didn't take it because I already went into the Coinbase play. I said, I'll hold off a little bit, but it was uh, J-A-T. Some people said it was Marcus Limonis, uh, the profit guy. I don't know if that was him. I can't confirm that. I didn't even look to confirm it because all I saw, and we went over this, the SC-13, there's this one investment firm buying just millions of shares. I think they own about 10% of the company. And by now they've been buying from like 15 to $20. They've even been buying options and selling them, like buying 40 calls and 70 calls and like literally like flipping them. And you can see this, it's all on a public SC13 filing, but then they announced that their stake, what they own. And then they even sent a letter to the board of directors for overstock with plans of how they could change thing, replacing board members and all that good stuff. But kind of in the same respect of activist investors, we saw some action there. So watch out for those. That is the set of play number twos. And then finally, play number three this one oh man you know the name baby snapchat and it rocketed up today and even in the same breath i would also watch meta because they're going to be reporting here soon i do believe snap is before meta i'm not too sure i don't know how they reconciled that but why it's shooting up out of nowhere even on big volume there was apparently a leaked internal memo outlining their full year 2024 like guidance said something about like 20 percent revenue growth and like growing members and seemed pretty good i think they even said like 500 million non-advertising revenue is what they were looking at people start liking that there but very interesting and like I'm saying just in the scope of today a lot of different headlines and news reasons to go up and down again the war stuff you watch the lag delay but for the most part it seems like a lot of individual news either reacting to the sector of earnings if you're in there or your earnings and then getting ready for what's about to happen so Chad that is all I hope you're ready and that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. And don't forget the wind.
The wind is opportunity. Oh, I'm telling you. Remember Starboard? I hope you feel. Somebody knows what I'm saying, but literally, the wind and opportunity. Opportunity comes like a wind. How you position yourself, set yourself up ready for it, and Chattadonia. Don't forget about the long term and the long run. Opportunity is a is a magnificent beast, but you have to think about it in all senses. It comes in many shapes and sizes. So, Chad, I hope you're ready for all of it. Stay in the game. Get ready for the end of the year. And God bless you and keep riding, baby. But I love you all. I'll see you in the morning. And peace out. Oh, I just breathe loud. Oh, now it's awkward. It wasn't going to be awkward till that breath. Horn.